Hi, this is Konstantin from Cicabo, and I'd like to welcome you to our video series about the Cicabo DTF Multicut Pro. In this video, we'll be creating a new queue that uses automatic counter cutting from scratch. Keep in mind that this is only one of the many possible ways the Cicabo DTF Multicut Pro can be used. Please make sure you've watched our setup video before watching this one. First off, we're gonna create a new queue. To do so, we're gonna select queue, manage queues all the way on the top, and hit the add queue button in the dialog that opened up. This opens up the create queue wizard. We're gonna hit next here, and um, configure the printer that we have. Um, in our case, we don't actually have a printer here, so we're just gonna go with the default options, but you would just select the options appropriate for whatever printer you have at your location. On the next page, we want to make sure that the Cicabo DTF Multicut Pro is selected and that the port is set to File. We're also going to double check the port options by clicking on the three dots here. The output folder specifies where the generated cut files will be placed into. In our case, we want them to end up in a hot folder on our desktop, but you are free to choose whatever folder you want. For output file name, we want to make sure that barcode value is selected so the Cicabo DTF Multicut Pro is able to automatically fetch um, the matching cut file when it scans a printed QR code. As for the default extension, we just want to make sure it's uh, PLT lowercase, the default is uppercase, so that needs to be changed. We're going to confirm this with OK and continue in the wizard. Now we're able to name our production queue. I'm just going to go ahead and use the Cable Contour Cutting for this one. And confirm with Next. Now it asks us to set up the media. Um, any media works, we just want to make sure that the maximum width is 600 millimeters, as that is also the maximum width supported by our machine. We're going to hit Next. Here we can um, already turn on our mark registration system. We just want to make sure to select the entry with DTF mode in the end. And um, on this page for the layout mode, we might just as well set it to automatic requesting. We're going to double check all the options later. This just makes it easier later on. And on the last page, we don't actually need to change anything. So we're just going to finish. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and assign our new group, new queue to the Cable group as well, so that it appears on the top in the right position. Next, we're going to go into the queue properties by clicking on the three dots of our newly created queue, and all the way on the bottom, queue properties. Here we can double check the media setup, make sure its maximum width is 600. We're going to go into the layout manager. We want to make sure that all jobs are mirrored on import so that they have the correct orientation after being printed. This is very important. The layout mode is already set to auto nesting and we want to make sure that the page is automatically closed when it reaches the maximum length that our machine supports. This is 880 millimeters. Here we can also specify a little space between our jobs and copies. This is completely up to you. You can also leave it at zero. And for, for the sake of our example, I'm just going to go ahead and add 40. Next, we're going to take a look at the production markup. We can already see that the system that we selected earlier in the wizard is in fact the system that is selected now. And we just want to make sure to enable the QR code here so that our machine will later be able to find the appropriate cut file for any QR codes it scans. Next, we're going to take a look at counter cutting. Um, we want to make sure to apply this to all incoming jobs. The mode we simply set to counter cut. Then here we can select what kind of path this creates. This requires a little bit of explanation. You can see here in the color actions what color name specifies what action. So, for example, if we would like to completely full cut all the automatically generated contours, we could just select cut contour because that uses the cut path knife. If we want to perforate the generated contours, we would simply be able to select half cut as that is linked to the perf cut process. For the sake of our example, we're just going to use um, cut contour so it fully cuts through. 
we do not want to apply this to inner contours that we're, as we're only interested in um, having one contour around uh, the outside of our graphic. I'm also gonna go ahead and add a little bit of an offset here. Two millimeters should be plenty. And I want to merge all contours. So if we have, um, for example, a word, we don't want a separate cut around each letter if they're spaced with a little bit of distance. We want the complete um, word or graphic in, in one contour. Um, and that's essentially it. We're going to confirm with OK. The queue is now completely set up and we can drag some sample files into it. Importing those is just going to take um, a little bit of time as um, now it's not only loading the files but it's also analyzing them to place the appropriate cut contours in them. But we can already see it working in the background. And if we take a close look, we can also zoom in a little bit. We can see that um, the cut contour, the green dotted line, has in fact been generated automatically without any manual labor involved whatsoever. Um, now next, I'm just going to duplicate the largest graphic a few times, so we fill at least one page. 20 should be enough. This is just going to take a bit since it has to uh, essentially repeat all of that for um, how many graphics there are now. Um, but we can already see that uh, we have two pages now. And the first page has automatically been closed as it approached the maximum length that we specified. Now we're just going to have to wait for all of the previews to finish and then we can go ahead and tell Digital Factory to cut our job. Now all the previews have been generated and we're able to select cut job in the top menu bar. We're just going to go ahead and do this. In our case we're just interested in cutting the job as we actually do not have a printer here but in, in your scenario you would just uh, usually select print and cut so both of the steps happen at the same time. Now we just have to get give Digital Factory a little bit of time to um, prepare the file and generate the contours. So uh, we'll be back as soon as that's done. And we're back. Now we can see that the job has moved to the reserve list on the bottom, meaning its processing has finished. And if we take a look at the folder we specified earlier, we can see that there's now two PLT files in there. Um, there's always two files per page, so you can cut them in either direction. So it doesn't matter if you cut them from um, top to bottom or bottom to top, you can insert it um, in any orientation into the machine and it will just work. This also concludes our video for setting up a new queue utilizing contra cutting from scratch. Enjoy!